Welcome back for another interview episode of Breakthrough Marketing Secrets. I'm really excited to be speaking with Tom Sharp today. And Tom, before we'll get to your bio in a second, but Tom, what is the biggest thing standing in the way of clarity and growth for entrepreneurs? Hey, Roy, that's that's simple one. That's a really simple one for me. It's not doing the work. That's basically it. So in, the way I see it, we need crystal clarity uh, for growth, but also for like um, our own mindset, for focus, for being productive. And clarity just doesn't appear all at once by itself. We need to do the work to, to gain the clarity. I actually think that that's one of the most important jobs that any entrepreneur should be doing for themselves and also for their teams. Provide, create, first create and then provide the clarity. So you're saying it's actually doing the work to find the clarity, like getting clarity is not something that, you know, the, the sky opens up and the light shines down and we suddenly have clarity. It's that we actually have to go through uh, work and a process to achieve clarity. Is that? Oh man, that would be so awesome. And, and I do <laughs> believe that that happens every once in a while, right? The sky opens, you have all this clarity. That's great. Still, I feel that most of the time, yeah, we need to do the work. And part of um, what I help entrepreneurs with is to create this clarity. And the way I think about it is you need to know who you are. I call it profile. Then you need to know what your boundaries are. And that's really hard when you're in the modern world where we are all knowledge workers and there are no real clear boundaries. Like if you're working on a farm, you know day by day, maybe hour by hour, what you're going to do. That's, that doesn't work if you're an entrepreneur on the internet. For sure, so, yeah. So knowing yourself, knowing your boundaries, then knowing your goals. Well, nobody is going to give you a list with, hey, Roy, this is your list of goals for the next year. Not if you're an yeah. entrepreneur. No. So somebody needs all. to come up with these goals, right? And uh, ties into who you are, ties into your boundaries, ties into your mission, what your passion is, what your heart is about. Um, but nobody is going to give it to you. So you have to do the work to, to gain, uh, to figure out what your goals are. Based on these goals, you make decisions day by day, and then you take action. And I, I really feel that if I lack cl clarity in my own life, uh, my productivity suffers, my focus suffers, my team suffers, <laughs> everything is going to fall apart. Um, but I use the word ent entropy, like yes. where things disintegrate if you don't put energy um, in it. And um, I feel that that's the same with clarity. I might may be very much influenced by David Allen, the GTD guy, getting things done guy. Yes. I love his book. I love his system. And this is one of the things that that really worked for me doing GTD. And part of that is like you have to create your own clarity. For sure, for sure. Well, I really love the start to this conversation. Let me uh, let me let me go backwards. We'll do your bio. And we can dive deeper into this. So uh, Tom Sharp is a leadership expert for entrepreneurs uh, with over 30 years experience in business. After moving from Europe to America, he's now freely publishing and sharing all his tips, techniques, and tools in English for any entrepreneur who wants to metamorphose their team into a motivated machine. Uh, Tom <laughs> loves sharing stories and tips about freeing up massive amounts of time, about, about building teams you can actually trust and about how he has helped ordinary entrepreneurs solve impossible problems. He's a number one best-selling author, professional speaker, and high-level coach. Uh, he he has a site, buildcoolthings.co, where you can learn more. Uh, and we'll I'll include links and in all of that. But but Tom, um oh, it's so easy met... to alliterate in English, you know that? Yeah. Do you really like that? <laughs> You guys do it all the time. I was always jealous. Like English is not my native language. And I was always yeah. jealous of all these acronyms and, and things that you guys could come up with. So uh, motivated machines, that's my first attempt at, at using some alliteration. <laughs> your your team is a motivated machine. Absolutely. And it's going to be a dream. It's supreme. <laughs> but I really yes. believe that you need to get there as an entrepreneur. Anyways. Yeah. But no, that, that that's that's absolutely great. Um, So... But what I guess I, I'm I'm trying to figure out where to go next because because I liked your introduction so much that all my prepared questions are like out the window here. 
I like um, we, that I'm already confusing yeah. you talking um, about clarity. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to get to your strategy patterns for business yes. growth because I think that I think that one of the things, well, like, so for example, getting things done, like I've gone deep yes. into the getting things done and adopted many of the principles uh, myself, if not the precise methodologies. But I think one of the things that works really um, effectively for that tool and then for what we're going to talk about with your strategy patterns for business growth is, is that it walks you through like a, a process for, right. for decision-making. Um, and so, so like, as we, as we're doing this, one of the things that jumped out at me that I think a lot of entrepreneurs don't talk about is, is boundaries. And so um, with regards to all of this, as we're looking at clarity and growing our business and growing our teams, why specifically does boundaries play such a key role in, in your approach here? I'm just curious about that. Yeah, I can see why. So, you know, I believe you touched on this for GTD. One of the things that I liked, that I love about GTD, about getting things done in the way that David set it up, is he calls it, it's implementation agnostic. Okay. You mentioned the word, the word principles, and that's what yes. I like. I love systems and methodologies that are fundamentally sound, where the principles are sound. And then you build on top of that and, and you figure out like practical tips and tips, tips and tricks and techniques and tools that you can use in your daily life and your work. But, yes. the, but if the underlying principles are not correct, then you get into trouble. And I feel that that's like, we, we both know Perry Marshall. He's always talking about the silver bullet syndrome and especially yes. for quick start entrepreneurs like me. I love the variety. I love the challenge. I love to do new things. I love live conversations like the one we're having right now. Um, but I'm I'm really easily sidetracked. Yes. And, and so in a world where you want to have some kind of an impact, it makes sense to figure out like what are the underlying principles and now what are the tips and the tricks and the tools and the techniques that I can use to implement those underlying foundational concepts in my life in my work and i believe that boundaries are really underestimated and i see it in europe i see it in the united states as well uh, i i feel that that the entire hustle mentality is is growing around the world yes and, and part of that i really like i enjoy and i feel that's really valuable to uh, spend some time hustling, especially when you're young, but also if you have a project that, that needs like a little bit of extra time, I don't care if you and your team are going to spend the next six weeks at the office early in the morning to till late at night and, and eat pizza. That's, that may not be the best combination if you want to be effective, but like, I don't care. Yeah. What I see with many of my clients and what I've noticed with myself is that when you turn that into an ongoing thing where you get into the habit of working, 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 and we're talking like 40 hours, 50 hours, 60 hours, 70 hours a week, you lose so much. Yeah. Apart from losing the connection to your family and friends and yourself and your sports and your, uh, uh, I don't know, your appreciation of art and travel. Apart from that, that's a huge part that you're losing. But also within the business, you are losing out on a lot of creativity, energy, new ideas, thinking. Um, yeah. And I believe that that's just not worth it. Yeah. Well, I, I, I remember seeing some research that said that actual productivity peaks somewhere in the um 30 to 40 hour range and there's going to every person is going to that their bell curve is going to be a little bit different Boy. right but but actual productivity is not increased by working 60 70 hours and quality of life 
things like engagement with your family, things things like how the experiences that you're actually enabling through the success that you're creating in your business, right? Like all of those things are lost. Um, and and I just love the the choice of including boundaries here. Um, so if I may give give one reference, Alex Bung wrote a book. It's called Rest R E S T, in which he describes research where they figured out that um, scientists, researchers, uh, university professors, they can work for four to six hours a day. Yeah. That's like thinking, real thinking. Yes. And the interesting thing is that if they uh, allow themselves or they challenge themselves to increase that number per day, their measured productivity drops. Yes. So we, the scientists that work the longest hours every week had had the least scientific breakthroughs. Well, okay. So this it's an so inverse this, I, relationship. Yeah. It's weird. I, it's completely I don't know if against our our grain. Yeah, I don't know if you're familiar with Gary Bensavenga, a uh, great copywriter, one of the greatest copywriters of all time. Um, but I, I, I still remember him talking about um, that. Really, he aimed for three productive, focused writing hours per day, yeah. and. And so I that makes sense. Like zooming out to the entrepreneur, we're looking to create business breakthroughs. We're looking to create success in our business. Um, and a lot of that can come from making sure that we are uh, finding that 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 focused and efficient time. Now, I do want to transition because I don't want to spend this entire interview yeah. talking about this. Um, your strategy patterns for business growth are absolutely fascinating. Thank and you. Um, it builds on like, we have a mutual friend in Perry Marshall. I see some of his concepts in there, but it also zooms out a little bit from there and, um, and speaks to some, some different, um, some, some different areas that are equally essential. I actually have a PDF from you open, um, right. for a visual I'm recording a video. Some people listen to this on audio. Um, they'll just have to listen carefully or find the YouTube video. But do you mind if I actually share? No, feel free. Um, okay, because I would love to talk about this specifically. Um, and so can you talk to me about these strategy patterns for business growth and how there's a 95% chance that a business problem or bottleneck can be found and solved by focusing on these? Oh, I'm skipping forward on pages no, by really. focusing on these nine areas. Um, like, can you tell me about this model and how it's used? So what I did do, what, what I did is I started to learn marketing, copywriting, advertising when I started a new training business and I needed many, many, many more clients than I did in the business that I started previously. So I sold a business and I started to train people actually in GTD uh, with uh, David's permission. And he, uh, and, and I needed much more clients because these were just one day training courses and okay. i had no clue i didn't know anything about marketing or branding or traffic or conversion that was all new to me so that's when i started to study marketing and over time i figured out or i realized that if you can take a, a systematic approach to marketing it becomes much more fun which of course tells you how my brain works. I, yes. I loathe manipulating people and I hate influencing them in, in a way that doesn't uh, fit their needs. Uh, so I have all this struggle and suddenly I find, oh, you can systematize this. And now it becomes this machine, this engine, marketing engine. Um, and now it becomes fun because I can start to understand it. I can see the puzzle pieces fall into place and 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 i know where to put my energy that's basically what this scheme is doing so in okay. my mind if you go a couple of pages further okay um yeah we have the ones where where, where exactly is that this one. where thank you okay yeah. Yes. So in my mind, there is a you when you want to grow or your business or when you want to build a new business, there are uh, nine areas you should optimize. 
Yes. And the first three are the foundation. The second three are what we would normally call marketing. And the last three, I didn't find a really good name for that. Um, I'll have to ask uh, chat GPT. I, I call it fortify here, but that's like after you sold your services or your products, how can you help your clients or your customers and how can that help you grow your business? Yes. So um, like in the foundational patterns, um, yes. we have profile, we have idea and we have business model. Right. And I think that these also kind of speak uh, it, certainly as we get into the business model, it speaks to the the economics. Like we talked, yes. you and I talked beforehand about Perry's power triangle, which forms so much of my thinking about direct response at this point, traffic conversion and economics. Um, so, so um, it, by profile here, do you mean, you mean customer profile idea is essentially like the solution that you're creating and then business model. So the way I approach it and now we have to go to another giant in the world of management, and his name is Eli Goldrod. He wrote a book okay. called The Goal that many uh, people have read. I actually like his book, It's Not Luck, a little better. And what he describes, and that has really helped my thinking, is that let's take a factory. You have a car okay. factory, and you want to increase the number of cars that you can produce in a day. You want to increase the output which is basically what we want to do when we want to grow a business, right? We want to, to, sure. to grow the output. Yeah. He says be, you can optimize any part of the factory okay. and not see any results unless you find what the current bottleneck is and optimize for the bo uh, you optimize the bottleneck. Okay, yes. So there's a guy in charge of the painting of the cars and you ask him like, how can you increase your throughput? And he says, well, we'll have to install these robots. That's going to take a gazillion dollars. And now <laughs> we have these robots. And nothing is changing because it turns out that the bottleneck was not in the painting the cars. It was in cutting the iron much earlier okay. in the process. Yeah. Or it could be and, in and, and installing so, the lights or in and, whatever. And and so the the painting department may get um, six cars per hour delivered to them, um, and if they can cut their painting time from nine minutes and thirty eight seconds to three minutes, it doesn't matter because they're still only getting six cars delivered to them. It doesn't help at all. Yes. Um, so that's okay. a really important um, subject in my thinking. We first have to locate the bottleneck. And then we're going to fix the bottleneck. And we avoid spending any time, money, or energy on anything else until we have fixed the bottleneck. Okay. So basically what I did in this strategy pattern is there's a way to analyze where's the bottleneck. But that makes, makes uh, things a bit complicated. We've done that with a ton of entrepreneurs. And in the end, I figured out it's these nine areas where oftentimes the bottleneck is. So the bottleneck could be your profile. This is about you as the entrepreneur. If you're okay. a quick start entre entrepreneur, you will probably thrive with a much different kind of business than when you were a fact finding entrepreneur. Or if you are, if your passion is very much to care for the environment, there are some kind of businesses that you will never uh, really enjoy growing them. Yes. Right, so there's there's all these dynamics coming back to you as the entrepreneur. Okay, for one of my current clients, that's actually her bottleneck. I well, I'll I'll just admit a little bit. Like I've had plenty of success in the investment newsletter space, but it, right. at some point, I realized that I didn't want to write another single stock promo, and I realized yeah. it way after I should have. Right, <laughs> exactly. Um, and for a while, my my bottleneck was like it. I was I was realizing that I wasn't finding motivation as a copywriter in particular for another one of these projects. And it wasn't because I needed some new motivational system or to listen to some new motivational speech or something like that. Okay. It was yeah, it was that the the business 
the work in the business no longer aligned with that profile. Exactly. Um, yeah. Okay. Perfect. So if we might jump to traffic. Yeah. If you're okay with that. Sure. Traffic, absolutely. In my mind, basically is how do you get people to see what you have to offer? So we are talking SEO. We are talking advertising. We are talking both online and offline. Um, we are talking newsletters that you send to your subscribers. That's all traffic. For sure. Yeah. What I see is that many entrepreneurs think, I want to sell more. So I need to uh, advertise more. Or I need my SEO to be better. Or I need to go and record TikTok videos or anything that anybody tells them that they should do to get more traffic. Yes. But that only works is traffic if traffic is your bottleneck. So let's go yeah. back to ID. ID is the basic concept of what you're going to sell in your business. How are you going to provide value to the world and how is the world going to give you value back? Probably yes. most often money. So I, IKEA, the basic idea is we sell furniture and we put it in flat packs. Or Netflix is we sell you movies or we rent you movies through the internet. That's the basic idea. Yeah. And I feel that when entrepreneurs start their business, and I'm mostly like most of the time, I'm solving my own problems in, in these models that I create. For sure. I many times have started the business based on on my first idea. I suddenly thought that oh, this could be a great idea, yeah. and I never really, really, really tried to find alternatives to this idea. Idea is weird because your brain comes up with an idea, and then at the same time, it sends a tiny message to a gland somewhere in your body. That says, like, uh, please uh, shoot some dopamine into his bloodstream or her <laughs> bloodstream. And that's like a hard drug that convinces you that this idea is the best idea ever. Yes. So for many entrepreneurs, if they want to grow their business, their bottleneck might be in their basic ID. Yeah. Like if you are right now, if you're a translator and you see what ChatGPT is doing. Your problem might not be that you need more traffic or that you need better conversion. Your problem might be that you need to upgrade your ID before the entire world of translating documents is obsolete. Yeah. So, so and, and, and that really points to a really important aspect of this is that this is a, a, a tool that it's not like you just set it out from the beginning and say, okay, um, if I have the right profile and the right idea, the right business model, branding, traffic, conversion, delivery, friendship, referrals, like it's going to take me, it's going to build a business for the next 50 years. It's in the context of a shifting market. Yeah. Um, I could have an idea today that is a great idea, but six months from now, something has changed in the marketplace that's made it. Um, exactly. that, that requires me to adapt, or I could have a great source of traffic, you know, and six yes. months from now, uh, you know, Facebook changes their tracking and suddenly it's a lot more difficult to, um, to do the same kind of targeting. And so suddenly my, my whole traffic model changes, et cetera. Um, and this also speaks to, I, I I actually love that the idea and the business model are separated here because a lot of times those get smashed together yep. and, and you could be solving the right problem, but have the wrong business model. And so right now I'm working with a client, uh, an entrepreneur, and I told him like, you need new ideas. Uh, that, yeah. That's his bottleneck. It really is. And we both agree on that. And okay. I challenged him to spend some serious time. Uh, on figuring out new ideas on my blog i have an article about how you do that like how do you jog your mind to get a, come up with new ideas and it's probably best to do that with other people involve other people do brainstorming i mean there's ways to do that and then he started drawing 
um, business model canvases. We use the Lean canvas. He used the Lean canvas. I like it uh, by Ash Muria from his book Running Lean. And but but he was too too soon. That was just too quick. He 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 had like three or four or five new ideas, and then he started to go to business model. And I said, no 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 no. This is important for you. I need at least nine, but preferably nineteen or even 99 new IDs. And they don't <laughs> all have to be awesome. Nobody yeah. cares about awesome. We're going to refine them. But coming up with IDs is much easier if you don't have to come up with the entire business model right at the same time. So in That's my mind, it makes sense to separate them. The ID can be great and you can have a lousy business model. Or yeah. you can have a, a lousy idea and it doesn't even uh, make sense to create a business model for it. For sure. Like an, an idea is really, I mean, in the context of my copywriting, one of the major things that I focus on is that most products are a problem solution equation or or right. um, a, a pair, right? So I identify a problem that someone has or that can be an unfulfilled desire. And I identify a novel or superior solution to that problem. And if I get that right, then at some point, like the, yes, there can be things that, um, like if I try to solve that problem for free for the entire world and it costs me $100 per person to solve it, but I have a business model problem. Right. Right. Um, but but if I get the problem solution right, that's where a lot of the excitement and and uh, adoption comes in the marketplace. But then it has to be translated into a business model that works that's scalable. Um, and and that is exactly I think that that is the basic job of an entrepreneur to yes. come up with these ideas and then to build them into great business models. And importantly, like an entrepreneur in. It can be at lots of different levels of the business because one of the things that happens is once you have your business off the ground, um, at a certain point, you have to become entrepreneurial again. You have to continue to launch new ideas into the marketplace, um, into your own market as well as to the broader market. Unfortunately, that is the time when we are stuck in delivery where we are delivering the services and the products that we have promised to sell to, to provide to our paying customers. Yes. And now we are running, uh, working those 60 or 80 hours a uh, week, um, uh, days, weeks, 80 hours a week. We are, <laughs> I don't know. Like now we are working way too much and we are in the hustle mode, mode just to to run the business that we probably didn't find the right idea or the right business model for. Because if we would have found the right idea and the right business model, by now our team could be doing the work. Yeah. Bringing us up as entrepreneurs to work on new ideas and new business models. Okay, so this is this is a great transition because um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the share here. Um, one of the things that I wanted to make sure that I talked about, um, like that, that's a great transition from talking about this whole um, strategy pattern, like you said, right. yes. into um, if you are successful with that strategy pattern as a solopreneur or um, even as a small team, suddenly your success creates a new chaotic situation for you where you are overworked where, you, where just to keep up you're you're running on that um as perry called it the hamster wheel the golden hamster wheel right um and and so one of the things that you focus on with your clients is um not just the strategy but the the, the team building right um and how to outsource and delegate effectively Exactly. Um, so, so talk a little bit about that process and like, if an entrepreneur is in the throes of this situation, like what, what is the process there to allow themselves to step back and continue to elevate and, and delegate? 
So the way I approach it or that, that my team and I, we approach it is we start figuring out who are, who you are profile. Then we figure out what do you really want? And there are levels. It's like an onion, right? We don't yeah. necessarily need to spend a year to figure out who you are. Um, that only makes sense if it's your bottleneck, then we can do two weeks on who you are. But basically we want to know kind of who you are, um, yeah. and, and what you want. And from there, we do the same type of analysis. We are going to do a bottleneck analysis, which in our case means we have some software where we map out all the problems that are in your life right now. The exercise is really like write down 10 to 100 problems that really bother you right now. And what we do is we try to link them up. Um, so if your problem is, I don't make enough profit, and another problem somewhere else is, I don't get to do many sales calls. And another problem somewhere else is I don't have an assistant to do my bookkeeping for me. Then in the end, if we've connected everything, all these problems that you that you have um, listed, if we connect them up, they are all interrelated. Okay. It's really fun to see. I've done it, this with so many entrepreneurs. And this is a fascinating process because like it is in the entrepreneurial world, there's so much like, positive focus that really resonates with me too. Like, um, the, the, like, oh, I want to achieve this goal and I want to focus on this goal and whatever, Yeah. but stepping back and saying, uh, like, what are the problems almost clears the decks, but also gives you clarity on what you actually want. I love this. Keep so going. It's so much more efficient than going just after your goals. Like there is a reason why you are not at the place where you want to be. Right. If it was easy, then you would have reached your goals already. So apart from Eli Goldrath, there is another um, like giant in the management field, and his name is uh, Richard Rummel. Uh, he's a professor and yeah. wrote two books on strategy. Uh, one of them, or the latest of them, is called The Crux. And he basically, he describes it a little bit differently, but, but his um, basic concept is the same. When you want to build a real, real strategy, you first need to figure out where is the crux, where is the bottleneck, where's the problem, where is the insidious thing that is hindering you from achieving your objectives right now. Yes. And, and so that's what we do. So we figure out like, what's the bottleneck? And then we um, create scenarios or what we do is mostly we invite the entrepreneur to come up with scenarios to, to solve the bottleneck. Uh, that might be nine scenarios or 19 or 99. And based on those scenarios, a scenario could be like, I hire a virtual assistant for four hours a week just to experiment with offloading some of my administrative work to her to see if that would work, yes or no. Yeah. And, and that's where we probably have a different approach than many other consulting or consultants is that we are really happy with small experiments. Instead of changing everything at the same time, I yeah. love just like if you, we talked about boundaries. Yeah. If you want to free up time, one of the best things that I know of is to create boundaries around your schedule. Yeah, And it might be that if you're working 80 hours a week right now, that these boundaries are in insane levels. But for most people, more, most entrepreneurs, I would say, I tell myself not to work before 8 a.m. and not to work after 6 p.m. Okay. And then when I reached it, that, that should be like pretty comfortable. And then I'm going to tighten these boundaries. Or you might want to say, I'm not going to work any evenings. Yeah. I'm working towards not working during the evenings. Or I'm I I won't work on Saturdays again. Or or like in the in the context of like whether it's working with the team or working um individually and just dealing with the the mass volume that of communication that we're Right. Dealing with all the time, something like setting up a, a buffer zone in your schedule where this is dedicated for communication time. Yep. Um, and that can be answering emails, clearing out your inbox, whatever. And, and maybe you need a couple of time, a couple blocks during the day. But then if you're working with a team, it's like, hey, Tom is available 
um, during this hour every day. And so if you really need to talk to Tom, this is his communication time. And that's a simple boundary, but in a way that like creates, it creates so much more freedom for you and for the people who need to communicate with you because they know unless you're like in a conversation with somebody else at that point that you are open during that time. Right. And they can find you there. So my um, team was horrified. <laughs> at one, one point in time, I told him, the only time you can talk to me about logistical and practical stuff is on Monday morning. You go to Eve, my operation manager. She gives you a slot. You get 20 minutes. You come into my room. Um, I turn on the kitchen timer um, like uh, the, to, to measure the 20 minutes. It's ticking there on the yeah. table. Uh, sometimes one of my people really, really needed some more extra time and they start, they brought an espresso uh, <laughs> as a peace offering. Uh, but most of the time it's 20 minutes. That's it for the rest of the week. Bye bye. I don't want to hear anything about like practical stuff anymore. Yeah, we can talk about concepts and ideas and projects and creative brainstorming. I love you. I like working with you. Otherwise, you would not be in my team. So let's do that. I just want Monday noon, like lunchtime. The rest of the week, I'm just going to work on creative stuff. Not everybody can do that. And yeah. that's why we need the small experiments to bring you from where you are now to where you want to go. But for it. me as well, it was like I needed to solve this bottleneck because my own team became the bottleneck in the growth of my business and in my my personal creative pursuits that I I was sacrificing because all these team members needed all my time. Yeah. I love that. I love that. I love that it is a model of what to do um, while also being what you help entrepreneurs do. Um, mm. You know, that you 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 are a model of your own methods here. Um, yeah, I, <laughs> I jump into the swimming pool in the deep end. Then I start to struggle. Uh, that's where I'm going to do just-in-time learning. Uh, yeah. But then I'm a little bit fanatical and I'm going to go all the way to learn what there is to learn. And yeah. that's when I like to then share these lessons with other people. Okay. So I think kind of the, the answer to this, this question is um, perhaps teased by the fact that you had the strategy patterns for business growth before. And now we're talking about putting boundaries around um, around your time. So um, you have this concept of gold, silver, and nickel yes. work or gold, sil silver, and nickel time. Um, can you speak to that and how it can help us um, both in terms of making sure that you know we're, we're executing the strategy pattern in the best possible way, but also um, you know, protecting our time in the best possible way? Um, yeah, I if, nicked that from if, Perry Marshall, actually. Okay. I think that he stole it from Dan um, Kennedy. And the idea is that every hour that you spend on anything can only be spent on something once. So as soon as I'm doing administrative work, I know that I'm uh, making really strange decisions because I can probably delegate that for 25 bucks an hour. And if I as an entrepreneur don't know what to do with my time that is more valuable than 25 bucks an hour, um, I have different problems, you know? So, yeah. so for most of our clients, it's relatively easy and also very important to get rid of the nickel work. The silver work that's normally around $100 an hour is, is way more insidious. Because now I'm going to delegate work and I feel that, oh, but I'm charging $90 an hour to do uh, for my clients for me to do this. So I lose that revenue if I'm not going to do it anymore. Or I need to hire somebody else for $60 an hour and, and charge my clients 90 And now I'm going to lose out on $60. But it's the same thing. If you as an entrepreneur have no ideas on how to spend your time uh, that's worth more than $60 an hour, the difference yeah. between the 90 and the, uh, or th the, yeah, the 60 that you lose by delegating it or outsourcing it, uh, then you may have different problems. And the kind of things that make the most money and where you as a, 
person add the most value to the world, I'm, it's not just about money for me. It's like adding value in any kind or way that you you can. Um, for me, that's the part where you're, where you were working on your IDs and your business model, and where you were optimizing your branding, traffic, and conversion, and where you were working with your team on optimizing the delivery, the friendship, and the referrals, and yeah. And coming up with new ideas and with better ways to serve your clients, but doing the the bookkeeping definitely is not one of the things that entrepreneurs should spend a lot of time on. Oh, for sure. <laughs> um, yeah. So I love this thinking, and I love that you challenge people to do that. And usually, when something is at the level of strategy, that that's where the thousand dollar per hour work the gold gold and work. that's the work that we are not doing because we are trapped in our silver work or even in the nickel work yeah but also because nobody ever taught us how to build great strategies so we don't have the framework so the one that i gave you like figure out who you are what you want what is the current bottleneck now come up with scenarios to fix the bottleneck and then create a strategy based on those scenarios and then uh, start small experiments nobody ever taught me how to do that um so that's weird and also building strategy takes time and energy and those are the two things that are in short supply when you're working those 80 hour uh 80 hour a week weeks <laughs> yeah for sure for sure um, I, I often find that I'm most exhausted by the end of the week if, if it is a heavy strategy week. Uh, but then that that work ends up that makes sense. It that that makes a difference uh over the longest term too. It's the highest value. Um so um let's see. Uh, as we're getting to the end here, um acknowledging that the you know we we have a definite end time, and I feel like we're just connecting and I feel like there's there's so much that we could go into we into could the talk future. about this for two weeks I guess yeah yeah um what question did I not ask that I should have asked maybe in reference to any of this or in reference to the type of transformations that you help clients achieve um what what question should I have asked and what is the answer to that question? <laughs> I'm sure that it will come to me in half an hour or so when I'm back okay. on the beach. No, well, wait, I'm wait, just kidding. Wait. But I, I, I th oh man, we I, started I'll tell you with what. boundaries. We started with um, what do you want from your business? What do you want from life? I yeah. believe that that I don't know how to. What's the question there? I've got it. You already gave it to me. I have it in my notes here near the bottom. Perfect. Um, so when somebody does a good job of this, when they elevate to a, to a place yes. where they're they're able to really focus on the strategy pattern, where they're uh, clearing out bottlenecks and where they've put solid boundaries around their work week. So suddenly, if they were working 60, 70, 80 hours a week just to keep up, now they're able to do more in 30 hours a week. Right. Um, suddenly, they have a whole bunch of extra free time. And uh, you have a concept called the 97 list. Yes. Um, so how do you help entrepreneurs find out what they would really like to do with all that extra free time? I love the 97 list. I love it. It's so much fun. And for some of my clients, it's it's a pretty big struggle. What I figured out is like we had this client and he was in meeting 60 hours every week. We, he asked his secretary to, to figure that out from his calendar, 60 hours on average. Yeah. Then he started working with us. So what did we do? We figured out where the bottleneck is, or we helped him figure out what's the bottleneck, solve the bottleneck. Now he could run his business or his team. Yeah, his business with 150 people in only 15, one five hours a week. No more 60 hours of meetings, just um, yeah. like two days of meetings. That's it. So now he had the three days. He had no clue. He became kind of sad. I don't know if he was really depressed, but it's like frustrated at least. Yeah. So there's a vacuum. Like, I don't know what to do. So I told him, go make a 97 list. And the 97 list is a list of 97 experiences that you have had in your life from childhood up until today 
that you really, really enjoyed doing. So you don't write down skiing. That's way too generic. Yeah. That, that one day where I took my son and my daughter and we skied from this place to the other one, three months in the mountains away. That that's like one of the items that could be on your list or building a tree house in the, in the garden of the neighbors. That's what I, that's on my 97 list. Okay. That's a long time ago. Yeah. So when you, it's, it can be pretty hard to come up with 97, but you have to, to persevere until you have at least 97 ideas. Then you group them and then you try to make combina combinations. And people find the weirdest things. They have insights that they like, oh, I used to really enjoy being outside. And yeah. now I'm in my office all the time. And I didn't even realize that because it's 18 years ago that I was outside all the time. I've locked myself in my office for 18 years now. I was not in touch with that part of myself, but I need to go create a new business or a new service where we do, I don't know, coaching on a bike or whatever. Yeah. Or even just, just finding whatever opportunity. That's great because it, it, it's like in the problems you find what you want and in the past experiences you find what you want to have in the future um i love this like doing the opposite to find what you want um yeah. that that's reflected in in the different advice you've given i do need to wrap up man i want to go Absolutely. even deeper now i, I want to take this conversation even further uh, so you have a blog where you offer free tips to entrepreneurs and um, it's full of good advice. Like you said, when you move from Europe to America, you kind of just open up the book even further and are just giving out wonderful free advice on um, growing your business from a marketing perspective, but from a broader strategic perspective as well. Um, that's it. Buildcoolthings.blog. I'll include the links in the description. You also have this refactor your business program where it's like working one-on-one -on -one with entrepreneurs to free up time for thinking and growing the business. And a lot of these exercises that we've talked about, I imagine are reflected in that. Absolutely. Can you speak to the blog and the refactor your business program and maybe who might be a good fit um, and, and what they would get from each of those? Absolutely. So what my plan, my strategic plan for the next couple of years is I want to uh, be a part of a growing movement of, of people who want to connect together to help leaders become better leaders, okay. especially in Gen Z. Yes. I feel there that, that we have like a ton of problems around the world where we don't necessarily need new technology. We just need better leaders to address them and to to solve these bottlenecks in the worldwide yeah. community so that's what i like doing and i'm funding that by training the people that i like working with most entrepreneurs and we are doing that in refactor and in refactor we like everything we talked about is part of what we do in refactor as well because it's very very personalized every business is different every human being is different every entrepreneur is different and so we we figure out who are you, what what do you want, where's the bottleneck, let's fix the bottleneck. And let's not work on branding, traffic conversion, and friendship all at the same time. But let's figure out where the bottleneck is and let's clear out the bottleneck and then see what's next. Yes. So the, the game is to share everything that I already created over the last two decades and share it in English. So we're in the process of translating stuff and sharing it and uh, hoping that we can make a ton of people really, really, really happy with that. Excellent. And so you have an opportunity for folks to uh, to come to you, see if they're a fit in the Refactor Your Business program yes. and to, to uh, book a call um, if they resonate with and they are a fit with what you, um, what you speak about there. I'll include the links in the description uh, to, to those you. two different services. Tom, I want to say thank you so much for um, for this interview. Thanks for having me, Roy. I, I think that everybody should just go to to iTunes or their favorite podcast platform and give you a review for what you are doing with this podcast and all the people that you're interviewing. Uh, you really deserve more five star reviews, is what I believe. And, <laughs> and so we need everybody to to go and do that for Roy. 
Well, thank you, Tom. Uh, to those of you who are listening, number one, thank you, as I always say. Thanks for uh, engaging with another episode. And you heard Tom. Uh, af- after you click the links and check out his stuff, uh, go ahead and give me a five-star <laughs> review as well. With that, we'll wrap up. Thank you. And I will see everybody again in the next episode. See you soon. Thank you once again for tuning in to this daily episode of Breakthrough Marketing Secrets. Remember, check out the links with this episode for even more value. Now make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe, and engage in every way you can to keep this show going and growing and delivering daily value to you. I'll catch you soon for your next big breakthrough.